Hi everyone, Professor Bergasser here, and this is our third video in the Reducing Specs uh, Calibration Tutorial, a spec data tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to be actually start to extract the spectra, the 1D spectra. Um, let me bring up the list of topics for this video here. So uh, I'm going to first show you the difference between the data we collect, which is 2D images, and eventually the 1D spectra that we're going to actually work with. Uh, that's the extraction process in, uh, in itself is doing that conversion. We're going to see how we extract our science spectra uh, and how we also separately subtract our, our standard spectra, our bright to lyric standard spectra, and also show how we can speed up this process by extracting a whole bunch of spectra all at the same time. That's going to be really great. All right, so let's first start by remembering that uh, we are analyzing one particular data set. Uh, we're looking at this data from 2003, May 21st. Here is our log file. What we're going to do today is just extract the first science source here and the calibrator source. And then to you know, merge these together, we're also going to be using this calibration set that we reduced in the last video. So let's go back to our uh, window for the splat machine. Um, I'm going to bring up my IDL again by bringing on the terminal, typing CD to get our home directory, seeding into our reductions slash 203521 folder, bash, and then IDL. And then we bring up X specs tool again. And notice that it retained the file, the folders that we used last time for this reduction. So for the extraction, we're going to jump all the way over here to point source, because all of the sources that we'll be extracting uh, are, are we're going to focus on our point sources, which are the easiest ones to extract. And there's a few things we need to set up before we go further. First of all is the index prefix. Now that prefix, if we go back to our log sheet, is these first letters in front of the file name. Basically what the machine's going to do is it's going to take the numbers we put in for the file numbers and stick them onto the prefix. And so we don't have to worry about actually spelling those out. So all I have to do is put SPC in there, and that's our prefix. And different logs, you know, different data sets may have different prefixes. So you just have to be a little bit careful about that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just reducing the first two images. And I pointed out earlier that these file names have these A's and B's. And those A's and B's are because the uh, image, the sources are actually observed on um, sort of two different steps on the instrument. In fact, probably to make this a little bit uh, more obvious, I'm going to bring up another tool here called X image tool, the image tool. And I'm going to load in the file that we're looking at. Now, this isn't, isn't in this folder. Remember, this is in our, our, our uh, data directory, our raw data directory. So I'm going to replace all of this with data slash specs. And um, we're going to look at the first SPC file. So let me go down to that one, bring it up. Oops, just missed it. There we go. So this is the A file. Now let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So first of all, uh, the scale is a little bit crazy. So what we're going to do is kind of adjust the scale by clicking on, excuse me, on the range and setting this to 99%. So that reduces the contrast a little bit. So let's uh, kind of piece together what we're seeing here. First of all, um, much of what we care about is in this one little section here where we see a lot of bright light. And what we're seeing is an image of the spectrum of the star and the sky, all right? So what you can imagine is the slit through which the light comes through is uh, sort of up and down in this image. And the prism disperses the light horizontally across the image. So this horizontal line here, line you see here, is a spectrum of the star that we're interested in. On top of that, there's also the spectrum of the sky, which fills the entire slit. So this whole rectangle with all these vertical lines, these are actually individual emission lines that come in our atmosphere, and they show up as these vertical bands. We don't want that because we don't care that much about what the atmosphere looks like. If we're an Earth scientist, we care about that. But as a stellar scientist, this is kind of a contamination to our light. Now, this is the A image. If I load up another image, let's look at the, the next one in the list, which is the B image, which you'll notice is that the star changes position. Right, so let me change the range on this again. Notice now the star is on the bottom of this kind of block of light. So what we do when we observe is we observe the star in two different positions, and then we subtract them to get rid of all of this extra starlight. 
Now the rest of the image here is actually not used. Um, we're only exposing a very small part of the detector. And so most of the sort of features you see here are actually just defects on the detector. And we're gonna completely ignore those because they're not actually part of the place where we get data. So again, this is what the raw data looked like in 2D. And we're gonna get this down to a 1D extraction. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. So again, we're gonna first look at that pair one to two. We're always gonna look at pairs of images so we can subtract off that sky. Um, I'm gonna put in the flat name and actually it's real easy because if I click on this link here, it's gonna take me to the folder. And remember that the, the calibration files right here, uh, the calibration files that we use for this data set were files 15 through 20, right? And actually the flat is 15 through 19. So we're just gonna select this 15 through 19 flat. And for the wave cal, we're gonna select the 20, right? Again, that corresponds to the, the image number there. And you always wanna take the calibrations that are closest uh, in sort of time to when you take the observations. So I'm gonna load this up. And the first thing you're gonna see is a pairwise subtracted, taking that A and B image and subtracted from each other. And so instead of this sky background, what I have is a positive and negative image of my star, which is the thing I'm really interested in, All right? Um, there's some other features in here that has to do with how the detector is used in the past. We're not gonna worry about that. All our science is really in this region right here. All right, so um, the first step to analyzing this is to actually figure out where in this image where the star is. And it does this by essentially smashing this image into a 1D uh, sort of uh, uh, plot that goes up and down. And the positive, you know, the A is gonna be a bright spot and the B is gonna be a negative spot. So if I click on this make spatial profiles, this is exactly what I see. This is essentially a trace kind of going this way along the image. And it tells me where the positive and negative spectra exposure are. Now, this is a nice bright source. And so actually this is our best case. And what we can do is we're gonna ask the computer to find where the aperture is. And it's actually very easy because we're just gonna set this in auto. And if I click on find star apertures, it basically finds where the center of these things are. Now, in some cases you may have a very faint source, perhaps it's very noisy. And so maybe these profiles aren't as good. In which case you can do uh, guess instead. And using my mouse, I'm gonna use the S uh, key on my keyboard to select. I'm gonna click on the two peaks here. And then if I click on find store apertures, it's basically gonna start from those initial points and kind of get to the maximum values for those two places. But as I said, auto is gonna be fine for us because we have a nice bright source. So I'm just gonna ahead and use that. Now we only have one order or one spectral line that we have to worry about. So there's no choice here. And in this case, um, generally for the science exposures, what we wanna do is we wanna use the aperture positions. So wherever it's centered here, we wanna use that as the trace. So if I uh, just click on trace objects, on the image, you now see a horizontal line. And that's basically saying, this is where I think the source is along the track. Um, and you can see it lines up pretty well. The next part is defining how we extract the data. There's a bunch of different options in here, but the, the first thing I would do is just use the baseline options and just select show apertures. And you're gonna see two things have changed. On our image, we have now two green lines that kind of bracket where the positive and negative images are. And in this plot, you see that the trace now has kind of three regions. The green region is supposed to indicate where the source is, where the light that we want to measure is. The red region indicates the background, right? So when we subtract these two images, it doesn't always get rid of all of the sky background, sometimes in the residual. So we want to define the region where if there's any residual sky stuff, we just want to subtract it off. You can see that's nicely flat in this image. And the white regions are just kind of in between. Now, this is actually pretty good, but if you, for example, you wanna kind of get just a little bit of it at the edge around here, what you can do is you can change this number, the PSF aperture radius. So I'm just gonna set that to say 1.2, a little bit bigger, that's in pixels. And if I click on show apertures again, it will widen that out a little bit. So I'll get a little bit more of the light. Um, everything else you generally don't need to worry about uh, for a normal extraction. So if I just click on now extract spectra, in an instant, we get a 1D spectrum. So this is the 1D trace of the spectrum here, showing where all the different features are. 
And by the way, this is a nice tool. This XV spec tool is one of the tools to visualize the spectra. And one of the things you can check out is if you click on uh, plot and then plot atmosphere, this is showing where the absorption from our atmosphere is strongest. In fact, what it's really showing is the transmission. So one is where it's you know, very little absorption from our atmosphere and very low numbers is where there's a lot of absorption. You can see that a lot of the features that we see in the spectrum line up pretty well with absorption from our atmosphere. So this is actually gonna predict that and a little bit later, we're gonna to have to correct for that atmospheric absorption from our atmosphere to get the true spectrum of the star, but you can visualize it very nicely with this tool. All right, so this is our, our 1D spectrum, at least extracted spectrum. Let me close these. Now, here's one great thing is once you've got one pair set up, you can actually then do all the rest the same, particularly when it's a nice bright source like this. So if I go back to my log sheet. I notice that I actually have eight files here, one through eight. I've only done one through two. So what I can do is I can put in the rest of the files here, three through eight. And instead of doing load image, I'm gonna do all steps. I'll click on that and I'm just going to sit back because now it's going to go through and do all those extraction steps that I've set up with the right parameters automatically, very quickly. All right, and that's it. So all those spectra are now extracted. Now that's the science target. We also have these, this bright star, this HD 101060. We know that's a different star because it's a different name, different coordinates, and a much shorter exposure time. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to use the same uh, calibration frames here, but now we're going to put in the first pair nine through 10 and load that up. You can see this is a much brighter star because it's got just a lot more light on the exposure. If I do the make spatial profiles, it makes the same kind of plot. Again, very clearly shown peaks, so I can keep this on automatic. And then for this star, because it's so bright, we actually can actually use the trace of the star, the, the brightness of the star, the spectrum itself, to trace the aperture along the image. So we're going to unclick this, click on trace objects. So you see all these little points have come here. Now it's really clear, closely tracing where the maximum brightness is for the source. I'm going to keep everything else here the same. I'm going to show the apertures, extract the spectrum. It's a very different spectrum because this turns out to be a very different kind of star. This is a bright A star. And again, it's gonna be something that we use for a calibration. And it's good to kind of keep an eye on, okay, this looks like a bright star. It's much brighter here at the shorter wavelengths. Um, these numbers are bigger than the last exposure. Um, and that's another good clue that this is a different kind of star. Now, again, we have multiple images. So what I'm gonna do is I've extracted the first pair. I'm just gonna do the next four images, 11 through 14, as a do all steps. And just sit back and let that go on its own. All right, and that's it. So uh, once you sort of, again, set up the parameters for the extraction and it's running very smoothly, often you can just use this do all steps to do all of the rest of the extractions uh, for that particular source. So we've now extracted all of these spectra, the first 14 spectra. We've obviously already done the calibration frames. And what we would do is we would repeat this then for our next set. So our next source, our next bright standard, our next calibrations, and next source, next bright standard, next calibrations. We just kind of march through the log sheet this way to do our extractions. And that's that main step. OK, so that's it for the extraction phase. The next part we're going to do is we're going to take all of those individual spectra and smash them all together to make one spectrum for each source that is a combination of all those measurements. And that's going to increase our signal to noise so that we have the best measurement possible. See you next time.